All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. So today we got a special guest. Introduce yourself, brother. What's up, y'all? My name's Throat Genji. I'm from Chelsea, Massachusetts, small hood near Boston. Been rapping for a while, you know. I'm glad to be here, man. I'm tuned in, man. Let's get it. All right, man. Look, man, we be back. Sketch Pad, you know what it is. Yeah, man, we back. So look, man, we're going to get into this straight into it, man. We love your song, man. Song was dope, man. What? So I want to start that. out by saying, man, um, the song was was based on the NES game, of course. Um, and the way you, you know, configured that song, what inspired you to write a song like that? Because I'm not going to say it was weird. But it just was something I would never expect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I like to tap in like to, to any mode that I'm in, you know, like whatever I'm feeling at the moment. And honestly, like I was just really feeling that game. Like for some reason, the first one, the first Metroid stuck with me because it was so like they just threw you in that space and you didn't know what exactly to do. There was no maps or anything. So I, I just thought that was really dope. And, and I love rap at the same time. So it was like, that's just what was inspiring me at the moment. So I, I went for it and it seemed like like everyone loved it. You know, I got my homie to do the mix from Canada. You know, shout out Johnny P. And uh, it was a clean mix and it came out great. So I, I was just hyped. And I knew it like um that it's not just like I'm going to sit and like just rap about the game like exactly. You know, I like to like obviously with metaphors and, and like the bars trying to relate it. Make it relatable as well, you know. Like if you haven't played it, you can still enjoy. So. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I just found that very fascinating. I said, "Damn!" Like I never saw, I never heard somebody actually do a song called Metroid and use everything from Metroid and still make it sound fire. Like, and don't get me wrong, people can Appreciate do things that. and make it sound fire. But I like the attack, or the approach that you took. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was pretty interesting, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Thank yeah. So, um, yeah. you said you're from where again? I'm from Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Mass. It's right near Boston. Oh, so you up? So you you above yeah. us? We we in New Jersey. So you okay? Cool, us. cool. You're about six, yeah, you're about six hours away from us. So okay, yeah, you up there? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so East so, Coast. All right. So still. let me ask you this: How long you been doing music? Oh, that, that's a good question because I've been rapping for like a while, like rapping for like twenty years. But, but honestly, music probably just five years now, you know. And like part of that was because just seeing where, where the scene was at, and it was like there were so many tight beats out there, so many producers out there, and it's like there's so much opportunity. And you know, I was getting older, and I'm I'm feeling like yo, if I don't like start taking it serious, at least like try, you know, it, it just be a shame. So here I am, just trying to do it, you know. So appreciate. It. The opportunity trying to get heard and uh it's crazy nowadays you know there's so many people doing it at the same time it's like it's a give and a take it's like yeah we got more tools and more more platforms and all this but there's also more people doing it so in a sense some people you could say it's easier but it's, it's tougher at the same time too so um i do have another question about something about that um being from up there okay so you made a song the song called metroid right are you planning on doing a whole NES album with the themes from the NES games? Or was that just a one-off? The song, was that just a one-off? I've made actually like several songs uh, to, to video games like that, like very similar, especially recently. Like all my last releases kind of, kind of been like that, like Resident Evil or like Splatterhouse. And uh, I like the NES theme, like, themed original like nes yeah. that would be dope but mm-hmm. like i love retro games so much and uh yeah what, what'd you say uh purdue 
Sorry. No, um, I was just getting ready to ask you. That was going to be my question because uh, I actually uh, checked out your YouTube channel and I seen that you made other video game themed type songs, you know, um, and I listened to a few of them. So is uh, is is that something like what Fuel Man was uh, was saying? Is that something that you're going to tap into frequently and possibly do an album or? Is that something that you just, you know, just, you know, just for the moment type of thing? Uh, -huh. I, I have released a, a video game themed album before, but I think I'm, I'm going to double back on that and really make it official because because the first time I did it, it was more so like I already had a couple video game songs. So I just put it all together. But but on the next go around, I'm going to like make it more coherent, you know, or cohesive, actually. And uh, so I'm right. definitely looking forward to do that, even though. I, I, that's not like the only thing I do, you know, it, it really varies a lot too, but like, that's what I've been feeling lately. So yeah, yeah. I, I think that do that for sure. Man, I think if you, that's okay. if you did like a, a the, everything was just retro, you know what I'm saying? The, the, mm -hmm. e everything, even the, um, even the, uh, what they call that, the, uh, the, the theme, the videos, everything just all retro games Artwork, you know what i'm everything. saying i think yeah that'd be kind of dope um so i'm gonna do that man who who uh Appreciate who it. does your production and and what's his name and, and has he done anything anything else yeah yeah that's a good question because because it honestly varies a lot but um he he did metroid um trying to think of some other trying to think of some other songs i don't know why can't think of them right now because it, it varies a lot. Uh, sometimes I'll do it myself, or um, sometimes some other other people will do it. Uh, he has helped me out on, on a couple projects, and uh, so shout out to him. But also, I uh, Born Hero. He, he's a well known producer. Like he make he makes a lot of uh, dope beats. And, you uh, so you you make your he help he sometimes too. No, no, not not beats, but just like mixing, like, like okay. decent mixing. Trying to learn more, you, you know. Trying to trying to get better with that because it's like I don't I don't I don't want to keep going to the same person expecting them to to do all this if I can't really compensate them, especially you know what I'm saying for for all their time. So I'm trying to learn it myself as well. Also, because you know maybe I got like a personal deadline I have. You know maybe mm -hmm. the other person might might not make it. Or yeah, something. yeah, that's true. That's true. Sometimes sometimes you do got to do everything on your own. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? Man, man, the journey the journey's been 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 dope for that. You know, I've learned like like basic video, like editing and like I think as an artist nowadays, of course, like you have to know so at least at least the basics of everything, you know, how to how to work a channel and all of that. Like you gotta be in control of your stuff. <laughs> for sure. That's true. Yeah, I think I think that's a uh, that's a valuable tool to have in your arsenal because uh, at times you you might be you might have this type of idea and then you seek out help and then you get that assistance for it, but their visual of what you're trying to depict might not be what you actually want. Because they don't understand, you know, what I'm saying, the creativity wise, what you're looking for. So I think it's I think it's best for artists to uh, try to find their own outlet as far as like getting their own stuff done on their own. You know, um, I follow that same pattern. You know what I'm saying? We follow that same pattern. Uh, we go, we do from graphic design to video editing to drawing our own stuff. You know what I'm saying? Logo work and all yeah, those yeah. things. We specialized in all that, and uh, and I myself, you know, what I'm saying as an individual, I found that very important because uh, there are deadlines you want to meet, but at the same time, too, you know, what I'm saying you might not you because because you got so much going on, you might not be able to meet the deadline that you want to meet at that time. But if you have your own control over the situation, you feel me? Then you're kind of able to navigate like, oh, okay, well, it's mine anyway. I'm doing it anyway, so I could kind of pace myself. You know what I'm saying? You you don't got to, like, you know, just rush, you know? Because, you know, like, yeah. like, currently for me, I'm working. 
currently for me, I'm working on an album, so I have to like pace myself, you know. So I tell artists all the time, like, you know, pacing is everything because you don't want to go rush to try to go push out a project and then the project is not what you actually wanted to push. And then, you know what I'm saying, you get, you become disappointed because you want to meet the deadlines and expectations of these other producers and people that surround you in your circle, but you're not meeting your own expectations. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if that's what you're doing as far as learning, continue to do that, you know what I mean? Because it's very important and it's a tool that you could probably use yourself and make money later on down the line because you are teaching somebody else. You understand? Bro, that's facts, bro. That is all facts, dude. That is important, man. You could end up like right now, like editing someone else's stuff for, for some dough. Who know who knows, you know, what, what could happen with mm -hmm. what you learn from here. Definitely gonna learn a lot and, and mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna become more intelligent pursuing what you love. Mm -hmm. what, so so what what artists what artist inspires you? Um, what artist inspires you? I should say, not like yeah. What artist inspires you? I don't really want to go too deep on that one. But what artist inspires you? Who you like? And you would say, yeah, that's Man. yeah, that's <clears throat> yeah. He's different. Mm. Well, especially especially since you said like like different. I think JPEG Mafia is crazy. Like he he's he's an amazing artist and he's a like producer as well. So he he was like the last artist I was really like going through their their all their catalog and just like really impressed seeing the journey how it's like it wasn't like a fake it till you make it type of stage he was really just keeping it real the whole time and eventually worked his worked his way up you know getting better and better so that's just awesome to see when you see someone's progress like still on the internet and like what they were doing before they like blew up and everything so I think that's dope I, I listen to a lot of vaporwave actually too like just instrumental music. Mm -hmm. like it. so I'm, I'm really into that because they got dope art as long as with with the um the music that it has with it you know just the visuals and the aesthetics that they have it, it's it's like retro combined with like nostalgic type of stuff like that so i think it's really interesting and, and sometimes that helps me just <clears throat> calm down I, I may write to it and not even like use that specific beat i'm writing to but it's like Sometimes some people will say elevator music, but it's, you know, the type of music you don't really got to like be listening to like hardcore lyrics or anything. You're kind of mm -hmm. just in a chill state. Yeah. So I, I, I love stuff saying. like that as well. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. There's some artist named uh, like Luxury Elite on, on the Vaporwave side or Windows 96, I think it is, is another name too. There's a lot of artists, uh, producers like Blank Body. And I, I mean, I think they're crazy, but they're still like not. Not very known, but some real creative work. In that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying That's to think of uh, but rappers, rappers. Honestly, it's been a, like a long because I've been listening to rap for a while. So you know, like way back early 2000s, it was probably like the whole Rockefeller. Like that was that was the shit back then, man. Mm -hmm. You know, from Jay Z, the Diplomats, like PD Crack, State Property. Every, I was like, I was listening to all that, and the Locks, of course, man. They was like they're legends, and and. And that was like rap was still very uh, prevalent, right? Like rapping well, you had to like really rap well still. And uh, even though I love uh, the, so a lot of the newer music as well, you know, it's just different. It relies a lot on mixing and like like auto tune and engineering. Yeah, it sounds that I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, you got anything you want to ask? Because I'll I keep going. Yeah. So. Oh, and, and Getting getting back to uh getting back to the Metroid. So um what I wanted to add, what I wanted to uh, ask you is um so what what did it take for you to like you know put something like that together? Like how 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 did you like you know what 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 thoughts had to come to mind when you were creating the song Metroid? Like, you know, because I know, like, there's been other game-themed type of songs from artists in the past. Like, you know, Siegel you mentioned State Property. Beanie Siegel had Pac-Man, you know what I'm saying, or yeah. Mac-Man. Uh, Coco Brothers, uh, New York artists, they had the uh, Super Mario. They had a Super, they actually did a oh. Super Mario Brothers song. 
uh, Eminem, yeah. Eminem also, a lot of people don't know, Eminem did a song, I think it was on the Lyricist Lounge joint. Uh, he did a song yeah. off, of, um, off of the Soul Calibur beat. Uh, the first, the oh, first oh yeah, yeah, album. yeah. You're right. You're right. That was crazy. That's an ill mention. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard that in a yeah, while. Yeah, so that, that hit me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so like, uh, what, what uh, thought process did you were you in at the time when, when you was like, oh, Metroid? You know what I'm saying? How can I? You know what I mean? Well, what were you at, at the time? Uh huh. Oh, man, that, that's that's a good question. I just um, it, it did come out a while ago, but um, I, I like to like relate it to to whatever's going on. I don't know. It, it felt it felt real natural. Like a lot of times, I don't try and uh, force it too much. You know, it, it was just the zone I was in, and I you know I always want to make sure to like um, just do well as far as the writing too. You know, I don't know the, something about it. It just it, the chorus came quick. And I was just visualizing it, like you said, like when, when the person comes down, like, you know, she's coming down, to save the earth. And, you know, I think mm -hmm. as I was, I think I was, mm -hmm. as I was writing it, I even probably had like the, it playing like on the side or something, you know, just, just to inspire as well. Mm -hmm. And just making sure to catch like mad references and, and how can I make it relatable to maybe whatever's going on or something, something funny, you know, or like an ill punchline or something like that. So th that's just what I was right. on with it. And, uh, I thought the beat was so dope. I just let it ride out at the end because I, you know, I was feeling it. And, and when I heard the beat, that that just really inspires to what I'm writing. You know, obviously it's like sometimes I can write to a beat that I'm not really liking all like that, but it's not gonna come out as best as me when I like something. It's just easy, right? It just flows. So when I heard the beat actually used the NES sounds and everything, I was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, what's up, man. That was fire. That was fire. Yeah, that's, that's pretty dope. I appreciate it. I was glad you guys caught the bars. Yeah. Nah, yeah, trust me. And we're familiar with the game, too. Yeah, yeah. I used to love Metroid. Mm. I had all of no. them. I had the first one. Hell yeah. I had the uh, one for the Super Nintendo. I even got the one for the Nintendo Switch right now. Metroid Dread. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, that one's fire, too. Yeah, I had the one for the Game Boy. I had, I had the one for Ooh, the game. Yeah, you had a lot. Yeah, no, nah, I'm a gamer. Dang. Like, I wouldn't That's say I'm a up. gamer. I would say that I love retro games. I have a, the, the Redmond Pi, 50,000 games on it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know my about Nintendo those. My Nintendo Switch, That's I got dope. about 400 games on my Nintendo Switch. I got two memory cards full. I sit, literally sit up at night Ooh. and just buy games, buy indie games. Like, if I like something, I like, because I like shooters. I like, I like, uh, what they call them? Uh, shoot 'em ups. The uh, the okay ones with the spaceships and shit like that. I love games like that. Yeah, also, yeah, I know I exactly what you're talking beat about. Beat 'em ups, shoot 'em ups, and I love like yeah. uh, adventure games. But I got I got both Zelda games. Um, I didn't beat either one of them because some of them games they piss me off because. You do more solving puzzles than actually fighting the enemies. And I don't like just oh, yeah. running around looking for treasures, digging this up, throwing that here, doing this. Right. I don't like all that no more. Yeah. I'm too old for that. I like to get to the action. Like, this is one game. It's called Goose. Uh, it's called Mega Goose. You ever heard of that? Hmm. It's fire. No, no. Get a chance to. Get a chance. Have I seen it? If you got the switch. It's called Mega Goose. Mega. I believe it's called Mega Goose or Mighty Goose. It's called Mighty Goose. That's what it's called. So if you get a chance, look it up. It's 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 made by the same people who, who made Metal Slug. So if you ever played any of the Metal Slugs, then you already know what time. Metal about. Slug was my shit. Yeah. Metal Slug was my yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't even gonna hold you. Metal yeah. Slug was my shit. You know. Um, Another game I called Valserus. Metal Slug trend. That game is dope. It's hard, but it's dope. Of course, Hades. Um, that game is dope. Um, I have so many games on my Switch, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, but yeah, indie game, indie games is where it's at, man. For that's where the creativity lies. Man, I, I feel like you know, gaming has evolved so much that the big companies can 
they already know like exactly what'll sell, I guess. And but a lot of indie companies they'll have more creative titles. Right now I'm playing uh I'm playing um Elden Elden Ring right now. And, uh, Hell yeah. Elden Ring is fire. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a huge problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those yeah, those games are dope. You get immersed in it. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting I'm getting bodied, bro. Like by regular guys in the game, just regular enemies in the game. Not even the bosses. Oh, it was tough. Like, that. like every like they'll call their friends and they'll come and just I'll try to run and they'll just chase me in, until they catch me. Fifty of them just kill me. That game is crazy. Yeah, man. damn. Yeah, so yeah, it's from right, the, so like, let's get the, into let's get the into Demon Souls what's going lineage on currently. Cause I want to get your perspective on it, cause this is history, oh, and we're all a part of it, You're right? What do you think about this battle between Drake and Kendrick, and do you think it's over? If you if you follow, Man. no, no, it's crazy. We we can't help but follow it, right? It's so so popping, it, man. It's everywhere, and I, and I, you know, kind of figured like probably might get might get brought up, and uh, but. Just what I feel about it in general, right? That's like kind of well, what you said. Well, I saying? mean, you can speak on however you will about it. You can talk okay. about the bars. It's about whatever. Yeah, you man. I think, I think, I think for one, I think it, yeah, it, it was dope. Like other than like, I don't know. Recently, it's just been getting like crazy, right? But I think at first it was dope. You know, as far as like a competitive edge, it was, it was dope to see. And I think, uh, like you know, I heard, I heard most, yeah, I heard them all. And uh, J Cole, of course, J Cole was in it at, at one time, right? Mm-hmm. But um, and then then he uh had his apology, and I think um, I wasn't even mad at him like that. You know, I kind of, you know, how J Cole is. And he's gonna, you know, I wasn't even, I wasn't tripping off off of that. I kind of hear heard him out on what he was saying, and it's funny now. Everyone like going back and saying like the whole like sorry J Cole, <laughs> and like after shit actually went down and got like super serious. I think yeah. uh, I think as far as uh, like the rapping, just just like like rapping on and some competitiveness. I think I do think they yeah, like like Drake's push up was his like best best one, right? And then and then Kendrick's was the Euphoria. I like to kind of put those head to head because those those were both great. Honestly, I mean mm-hmm. for their own like respective reasons. You know, I think obviously I think it went how how. You know it's going because Drake, <clears throat> Drake is a relatable artist, right? With what he does, obviously, like, but but Kendrick is very creative and his his vocabulary is crazy, right? So, man, Euphoria was just crazy, bro. <laughs> but, yeah, you know it's crazy. It, the consensus, yeah. it's it's so. The thing is, when people ask, I ask anybody this question, they either say Euphoria is the best. They they not like us or six one six one six. The other one, mm. a lot of people say is the greatest joint of all time, but they always say those three songs. Now, I think that what happened with this whole battle to me is Kendrick. He, I put it to you like this: Drake wasn't the king, and I had to acknowledge that. Not the fact that he wasn't the king of rap because he's not the king of rap. He was the most, he was probably the most soul highest rap. But I think that Kendrick wanted to solidify his spot as being the legend that he needed to be. He wanted to be next to Pac, Big, J, M, whoever. He had to get that. In order for him to get that, he had to beat J. Cole and he had to beat Drake. He had to because those guys are. What Nas J was back in 20, back in 97, 96, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's where, so he had to, he had to take the crown from Drake, snatch it from him. Like, nah, I'm the best and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. I don't think that Drake, I think Drake was on cruise control the whole time and he didn't realize that this guy is more talented than you. You might be bigger than him, but he he can take it from you if he wanted to. And I think that's what he did. And how I draw the conclusion is it's not over because Drake's never going to stop talking. And Kendrick got an album coming out. But at this moment, 
I can definitively, definitive, definitively say that Drake lost because he gave up. He quit. People say, oh, he was the last person to do a song. He quit. He quit. And I think that's what Wait, So, So the last, uh, the last one was from Kendrick? No. Yeah. The last one was from Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he basically threw his hands up. He said at the end of the work. And this is another reason why mm-hmm. I didn't like what he did. So the first yeah, he shouldn't song, even have talked to Dan. But... <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> in push-ups, he said, um, no, in the push-ups, in Taylor May Freestyle, he said, nah, 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 you going to follow this through. You ain't going. You ain't. You ain't going. Just hit me with a shot and not say nothing. Then, Kendrick drops a verse. Drops a song. He drops, Family Matters. Kendrick drops, two more songs. What was that? Um, not like us. They not like us. Then Drake drops, uh, Heart Part Six, and he quits. He had to go out on his shield because, if you look at it from that perspective. He was getting slaughtered because every Kendrick record that came out was super crazy. It wasn't just some regular stuff. It was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. So I think that that's what happened with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I hear uh, you. He was I, like, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead and finish. Then I'll, um, then I'll tap in. Um, okay. I was just um I was just gonna say yeah because at the end he said something about it being burnt out like I mean regardless if that's how you felt like he shouldn't even have just even said said all that that was it to me he should have just kept rapping he should have just yeah yeah because the rapping rapping wasn't wasn't too bad (laughs) that'd have been it (laughs) he should have just kept rapping until they both stopped you 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 saying you going on vacation you got time. So why not just keep rapping until y'all both stop and and then let the people decide? But yeah, I don't know. Who says? Yeah, um, to uh, to chime in on um, the J Cole thing, I I I do have to admit. But the one thing I want to say is, uh, um, was most deaf right? From what he was saying, if you if you if you think about it now, when it comes to Drake, was most definitely accurate on his uh, on what he was saying in that interview. Because if you go back to the interview he had with the girl on that podcast, right, and she asked him the question about his music and so forth and so on, whatever, whatever, and he answered it to his the best way he could without trying try to seem like a hater, even though it sound like he was hating or whatever, was he right? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, you know, because now when you, when you fast forward to what's going on now and then J. Cole doing what he doing when he backed out, I feel, I feel like after looking at everything and how things have gotten real drastic, because let's let's face it, it, it got and it, it became more than rap once they started mentioning each other's family members. It became more than rap. That's yeah. when it became real serious. And um and the fans and the fans just took it and just ran with it. You know, if you uh right. if you pay attention to what's going on now, you know what I'm saying, the whole vandalism situation with his with his property and I, I want to say something about that too. Then I'm gonna let you go. Like we was, me and Funeral Man was talking about this earlier, and it does make a lot of sense that he kind of that he could have or possibly allegedly set up his home, his own type of vandalism and own shooting or whatever, just so then they can get off his back as far as the whole pedophile situation it does it, mm. it does seem like that that is possible you know what i'm saying because i was reading this one article and it was it was basically saying that look you know he's losing these endorsements people was calling his phone yada 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 this and that like it's not looking good it's not looking good and they needed a way out 
the way out to like, you know, to simmer things down. So my question is to you is, what is your take on that thing? Do you feel the one first question? Do you feel J. Cole did the right thing by backing out, which I, I think you probably answered that already. And the other question is, do you feel most deaf now that you see um, you follow most deaf, by the way? Yeah, yeah, I've seen the, the clip that you're talking about, and uh, I'm, I'm familiar with his okay. music and everything, yeah. Most F a legend. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, so, so then you're familiar with that clip. All right, so do you think, now that you're looking at everything, do you think what, what most Def was saying was accurate as far as his music? Do you think J. Cole did the right thing as far as backing out? And lastly, do you think that the whole situation with with now the vandalism and 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 this and that with uh, the OVO property and the store in London being vandalized? Do you think that was set up, or do you think it could have possibly happened? Because it, you know, what I mean, because it could happen, but you know, I want to hear from your perspective. Okay. Um... Well, I'll just start. I'll start with that then. Like, I, I'm not. I'm not even sure to be honest. You know, I mean, I never put anything. You know, past. You know, being far. I never say would say it was like far fetched. But I, I just. I don't really know. I think that was. Was was like a messed up situation. But you don't really know, right? Who knows exactly? I mean, that 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 is a interesting point. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, J Cole, J Cole. I think uh, it seemed like. Like people said, and, and what seems evident, his relationship with, with Kendrick is different, right? So when I think he, uh, and like y'all said, and, and Kendrick, you know, he was hearing the big three stuff and he kind of started with the, oh, it's just big me, right? And like, right? Like who wants, if, if you really want to be the best, why you want to be grouped up with like three people, right? Like this isn't basketball, but this is not teams. You know what I'm saying? Like this is rapping. So, you know, everyone's an artist themselves. So I definitely feel that. Yeah, he wanted to come out like like as king, and uh, and J Cole, J Cole is an amazing rapper, man. J J Cole is amazing, but maybe he jumped out the window like a little a little too much, right? I mean, when he started only mainly just the album talk, like he started downplaying his albums, and like he like he went like he said he went back and he, he kind of took it back. He's like, you know, that he wasn't really feeling all that way he was just exaggerating it for the whole diss aspect and everything like that so um you said was he was he was j cole uh right about doing that or just how i felt about uh the j cole was he was he right was he right about yeah. you know backing out the situation and uh and was most deaf and was most deaf as far as what he thought of drake was he right about what he thought about Drake as far as his music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I think J Cole was right in doing what he felt um, for right for his soul, right? And um and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, sorry. What, what was the other thing? My bad. <laughs> Most no, deaf. So, uh, most uh, deaf. Okay. Okay. The the most deaf. Yeah. Yeah. No. You, yeah. You made an interesting yeah. point there because um. Yeah, yeah. As far as what what most was saying, because what, yeah, when you are so popular and when you do have like the pull of these companies, right, and you get into a hostile type of beef, then I could see like I don't even know about in, endorsements being lost or maybe being lost, but but I could see that. And um, yeah, that would be a downside he, uh, to to being yeah that type of artist and that hostile beef that. That could cause issues. Yeah, because yeah. most of really put the brought the hammer down on as far as like what he thought, and then everybody got on most Def's case, including including us. But now when I kind of think about it, you know, mm -hmm. maybe he, he maybe he might have had a point. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you know, yeah. you know things 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 nowadays is kind of age and kind of different. If you think about it, you know, like. <laughs> With everything going on, this whole situation, like things aged way different than what people would have expected. But, but hey, you know what I'm saying? That's music, you know? That's just it.
Come on. Yeah, so so before we get out of here, we usually play a game with the with everybody. Um we ask ask a question, you answer it with one word. So we're gonna throw a name at you and you answer it with one word. So just understand it could be anything. You know what I'm saying? Anybody, anything. Okay. So you want to start or you want me to start? Um, S. All right, I'll start. Um, uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good one. Wild, wild. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Florida. Oh, shit. Oh shit, man! I ain't gonna lie. I was I was thinking crazy uh, off top. Shout out to Florida, but it seems seems crazy. Uh, hmm. what you say, about Florida? What did he say? Uh, did you did you answer it? <laughs> I, I man. Yeah, yeah. I, I said crazy, but I, I was I was thinking I was thinking also. I mean, Florida's beautiful, but it's about it like it seems peculiar. I'll say okay. that. All right. We'll just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Celtics. Champions. Okay. okay. Um, Castlevania, the animated series. It's fire. Okay. Uh, hmm. Blood sport. Van Dam. <laughs> Van Dam. <laughs> That's what came to mind. Van Dam. All right. Uh, let me see. Batman. Oh. Um. Man. Darkness. All right. You got one more? Yeah, uh, yeah I got one more. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, hmm. I'm going I'm to I'm test you on this one. See where you at. The firm. The firm. Uh, the firm. I'm going to say Cormega. Mm, okay. Or, okay. I'll just ask this. Uh, Jackie Chan. Oh, man. Uh, uh, legend. Legend. Okay. Right. I love love Jackie Chan, man. All right. All right. I used to watch. I used to man. I love his movies, bro. From Rumble in the yeah, Bronx to the <laughs> obviously Rush Hour. <laughs> yeah, he has a lot. He has a whole lot of movies. He broke his ankle twice in a movie. He broke both of his ankles in one movie one time. That was the Bronx. Uh, Rumble in the Bronx. He broke both. Oh of yeah, his yeah. Ankles. Man, he did he did wild stuff. He, he was like. The boat scene where he was like hanging on by a rope, and like his shoes after were like burnt away by the water. Yeah, um, it was crazy. He's, wild. he's a wild boy. He's a wild boy. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't really hey, see. Man, I feel look, like man, you don't. Nice you don't see you that know, nowadays. Man. Tell everybody where they can find you, man. And this episode will be up. So, hey, man, holla at me, y'all. I'll be on all profiles. Actually, like, so music is on every every platform: Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, any platform you could really think of it uh, this this the same name i would appreciate like like all the follows because i feel like you know working independently it's tough right so obviously i'm trying to take these opportunities and i, I appreciate y'all having me on there so if you like like you know retro games or vaporwave type rap or even just like good rapping in general like i also freestyle rap like 
mm-hmm. like my ass off. I'll be doing that like all the time on Twitch, twitch.tv slash throw Genji. I, I stream on there like all the time freestyle. I really love the freestyle rap. So I, I just love rap all in general. So like the music is on Spotify and YouTube and everywhere. And if you want to catch me live, you could ask me questions. Like some people ask, or you could even send me beats. Yeah. Like uh, when I'm live on, on Twitch, you can send me beats. I'll freestyle over them. I'll like answer questions in the chat. You know, we just like we have a good time on there. So that has been going well. So so if y'all want to check me out live on there, and uh, I'd appreciate appreciate it so much, man. Hey man, look man, thank you for coming on, man. Sketchpad, you know what it is. We see y'all. Peace, bye, man. We out of here. Peace.